Lesson 13, solve linear equations with rational coefficients. In this case, remember that the prerequisite is to solve problems with expressions. So we are going to study the example. For example, the length of each side of the equilateral triangle. That's a lot of information here. Equilateral triangle are shown. Write two different expressions for the perimeter of the triangle. Remember that perimeter is the addition of all the sides of a triangle. And in this case, it's equilateral. So that means every single side is the same. They're asking me to do two expressions. Number one, you find the sum of the side lengths. For example, d plus 5, d plus 5, d plus 5. And then expression number two, you can just, how many sides do you have? Three. So we can multiply three, the number of sides, by the expression d plus 5. And those are your two expressions. So in this case, number one, simplify expression number one. So you have, for example, d plus 5 plus d plus 5 plus d plus 5. And what is d plus d plus d? Okay, is equals to 3d. And then 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 5 equals to 15. And that's the solution. Problem number 2. Simplify expression number 2. So I have 3d plus 5. We apply this to property. 3 times d is 3d. And... Uh, 3 times 5 is 15. Okay. Now, what do you notice about the simplified expression in problems number 1 and number 2? What can you see? They are the same. They are equivalent. Okay. They are equivalent in this case. And number 4, I have... Jessica, rewrite the expression 1 as d plus d plus d plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. Why might she have done this? Why? Okay. In this case, she can gather like terms. So in this case, my answer is going to be to gather like terms. Okay. That's what she did. Just gather those like terms and then um, simplify them. Is Jessica's expression equivalent to expression number 2? Explain how you know. The answer is yes. Yes. How do I know? D plus D plus D is 3D. Plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. C is exactly the same. So yes. Uh, in this case, I simplify her expression. Three D plus fifteen, which is the same. which is the same as the simplified version of expression 2. Okay, turn the page, 152. The length of the side of a rectangle are shown. Write two equivalent expressions for the perimeter of the rectangle. Now look at the rectangle. Two opposite sides are congruent. They are the same. So, for example, one expression can be, how many sets of t do you have? You have two. So I'm going to say, for example, 2 times t plus 2 times t plus 3. Okay, that's one. Another one. Okay, another one will be t plus t. I'm adding these two, and then I'm going to add these two here. Plus t plus 3 plus t plus 3 in parentheses. Now, if you simplify, if you simplify these ones, you have, I'm going to do this one. 2t plus 2t plus 6, and 2 plus 2 is 4t plus 6. That will be the simplified form. 4t plus 6 in both equations. Next. Problem number 7 says, write two different expressions that are equivalent to 12 minus 16x. Use factorings to rewrite one of the expression. Factoring is the opposite of the theory property. Okay, so in this case, what we are going to do from problem number 7 is, uh, for example, I'm going to put 4 and then parentheses 
3x minus 4 for 3 minus 4x, that's one expression, is the opposite. Look, 4 times 3, 12, and 4 times 4, negative 16. Another one, okay, I have 2, and then parentheses, 6 minus 8x, that's another expression that is equivalent, okay? Um, can I do another one? Yes. Uh, it says 2, but I'm just going to, for example, in this case, I'm going to have 3 minus 4x plus 3 minus 4x plus 3 minus 4x plus 3 minus 4x. And that one, 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 3 equals 12 and 4, it will give you 2, negative 16. Now, next one. Um, describe how to determine whether this expression is equivalent to this one. Are the expression equivalent? So in this case, it's yes. It's going to be yes, and I'm going to explain why. Okay? Let me do this one, for example, this one. So I have 18 minus 3 times 2, 6p. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 minus 3p. Let's simplify. So 18. 18 minus 12 is 6. I'm going to write 6. And then 6 minus 3 is negative 9p. Okay? And this one, if I multiply 3 times 2 is 6. And 3 times 3 is negative 9p. See? Both are the same. Expressions. Um, so they are equivalent. Yes, they are equivalent. Okay. And as um, proof, you can uh, write this one. Then uh, number 9 says, Tran says that negative 1 fourth x minus 7 plus 9 over 4 x plus 2 x is equivalent to this expression. How can you substitute any value for x help you determine whether the trend is correct? Is trend correct? Use substitution to justify your answer. Okay, it's problem number 9. So in this case, any value of x you can choose. For example, any value of x. gives you the same result. For equivalent expression. For equivalent expression. For example, if x is equal to 4, okay, so I'm going to have negative 1 over 4 times 4 minus 7 plus 9 over 4 times 4, plus 2x. See, this 4 goes away, so you have negative 1 minus 7, plus 9, plus 2. Is this, this, four, this is x, so 2 times 4 is 8, plus 8. Okay? So what I have, when you add all those expressions, okay, you get 9. All this one is equals to 9. So when x equals to 4, okay? So the results are the same. Okay. So that's what we did. We make the substitution. Negative 1 minus 7 plus 9. Oh, this is uh, plus 2x. This is 8 here. 7 is a negative 8. This cancels out, so you get 9. I, I wrote one extra number. Uh, so I just uh, fix it. And then here, if you put 4, uh, 4 times 4 is equals to 16. Okay. 16 minus 7 is equals to 9. So you get the same expression. And number 10, I have the perimeter of a square. Square, every side is the same. Can be represented by the expression following. Write an expression to represent the length of one of the sides of the square. So in this case, if I have 8x minus 10 plus 8x minus 10, so 16x minus 20, okay? And this one can be equals to 4, 4x minus 5. It's the factor form. So it's a square. So you have four sides. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 5 is negative 20. So we did the opposite steps, okay? So you got that one. So in this case, I'm going to say the length 
of one side of the square is 4x minus 5 because it's this one this is the length of the side so you have four sides 4x minus 5 4x minus 5 4x minus 5 4x minus 5 and then you have four sides that you can put there okay that's page 152 so we're going to page 153 And in this case, they are asking me to follow this example. So I'm going to ask you to go over this example. Look how they solve those equations. And then number one, check the solution to the example by replacing n in the original equation with negative 2. And evaluating both sides, what the true statement do you get? So in this case, in the original equation, so 4 times negative 2 equals to 1 half, 2 times negative 2 minus 12, so 4 times 2 is equals to negative 8 equals to 1 half. I'm going to put a question mark here just because I don't know at this point. Then 2 times negative 4 minus 12. So negative 8 is equals to 1 half. Then negative 4 minus 12 is equals to negative 16. And then we multiply this two. 1 half times negative 16. Is, it's like having 16 divided by 2. So negative a is equals to negative a. So that's the true statement. So in this case, negative a equals to negative a. Number two, suppose that you first want to eliminate the fraction in the example of the equation. What will you do first? What will be the first step? Is negative 2 still the solution when you start eliminating the fraction? First, explain. The solution is going to be the same. Okay. What I'm trying to eliminate the fraction is to avoid doing those steps with fractions because some students have problems with fractions. So in this case, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2, which is the denominator. So we need to cancel the denominator. So we multiply both sides of the equation by 2. And then we have, yes, I get the equation a n equals to 2 n minus 12 which simplifies to n equals negative 2 so if you multiply by 2 so 2 times 4 n 2 times 1 half 2 times 4 is a n 2 times 1 half is equals to 1 because it's 2 divided by 2. So you get equals to 2n minus 12. Minus 2n here. Minus 2n. Minus 2n. Cancels out. 6n equals to negative 12. Then divide by 6. So n is equals to negative 2. You get the same. So number 3. Trace solve the equation 1 fourth ax plus 16 equals to 4x as shown at the right. Describe the error that made then solve the problem. Where is the mistake? 1 fourth divided by 8 is equals to 2. 1 fourth divided by, okay, he forgot to multiply 16 by 1 fourth. So let's correct that problem. So 1 fourth times 8 is equals to 2x. 1 fourth divided by 16 is equals to 4, plus 4, equals to 4x. Okay, minus 2, minus 2x. So I get 4 equals to 2x, then we divide by 2, so we have 2 equals to x, and that's the solution, okay? That will be the solution, x equals to 2, and the explanation is he forgot to apply correctly the distributive property. That's 153, let's move to 154. Describe the first step you will do to use solve the equation 20 equals to 7y plus 2 minus y that is only possible first step. Is that the only possible first step? Okay. So in this case, for number four, I'm going to have, I will start combining like terms on the right side. of the equation. Okay. 
the equation to get 20 equals to 6y plus 2. And then, what is the second question? Is that the only possible first step? No. No. I also could have subtracted 2 from both sides of the equation to get 18 equals to 7y minus y. You will get that one, okay? Then problem number 5, solve the equation in two different ways. So you have 6p equals to 0 0.6 times 5p plus 15. So number 1, I'm going to apply distributive property, okay? So for example, I have 6p equals to 0 0.6 times 5p plus 15. So 6p is equals to 0 0.6 times 5 is equals to 3p. So 0 0.6 times 15 is equals to 9. Then we subtract both sides by 3p. And this one goes away. So I have 3p equals to 9 divided by 3. So p is equals to 3. That's the solution. Okay, second part. I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.6, so 6p equals 0 0.6, 5p plus 15. And remember, we should get the same. So I'm going to do a 0 0.6, 0 0.6. This two goes away. So 6 divided by 0 0.6 equals to 10p equals to 5p plus 15, then minus 5p. So I have 5p is equals to 15, then divide by 5, so we get 3. See, we got the same solution uh, applying, so solution is P equals to 3. Number 6, and the last one of this part, part 1, I have the two rectangles shown below have the same perimeter. Write and solve an equation to find the values of X, then find the measure of the length with rectangle B. All measures are in inches. Be careful, all, all measures are in inches. So in this case, equation. So I'm going to have two, remember, two, four x minus three equals, oh, plus two x. Where do I get that one? This is four x minus three, so this one is four x minus three. If this one is x, this one is also x. So four x minus three times two, plus 2 times x, because you have 2x. And this is equals to 24, okay? So, next, what is the value of x? After you solve that equation, you get that x is equals to 3, okay? So, for example, 2 times 4 is 8x, 2 times 3 is negative 6, plus 2x equals to 24, so then 8 plus 2 is 10x, minus 6 equals to 24, then plus 6 equals to 30 if you add 6 both sides, and then you divide by 10, so x is equals to 3. See, you got 3. Now, what we do next, length of rectangle B, length. So, what is here? 3 times 4 is 12, minus 3 is 9, so this one is 9 inches. Okay. Then width of rectangle B, in this case, is 3 inches. Okay. Because this is X, so it's just 3. Now, where do I get that 24? This is 7, this is 7, this is 5. So it's 10 plus 14, it's equals to 24. So that's where you get in that 24 uh, in that equation. So in this case, uh, wait for part 2 later. Uh, have a wonderful day.